What's good with y'all boys, man? It's Clip Ganger Don't Bang, aka CGODB, coming live from the basement of Staples. I'm just here to deliver another video tonight, so this is gonna be the quick little Clippers off season 2022. Things I suggest that we do in order to, you know, in order to just go into next season full fledged, you know, ready to cause havoc. You know, dropping bombs on everybody. So, there's just uh, some very, very vital things we gotta take care of, and I'm gonna address it in this video. Also, too, um, keep an eye out. I'm gonna be doing a series on every player on the roster, evaluate how they did last season, um, and even players like Kawhi. You know, like um, you know, just his role going forward, and just like. You know how things have changed a little bit and like what we expect of him coming off his ACL and stuff like that. Um, but especially too, like for the players that played last season, um, even PG who played a little bit, he definitely showed some like great stuff um, like in his playmaking and other things like that, that he improved on in his, you know, smaller sample size. But yeah, just look out for those videos. I'm going to be dropping that series soon. But let's get into this though. Our strengths. So, I know it's kind of hard to evaluate for some people because we were missing our guys. So, our strengths aren't even our full, full, you know, level strengths yet. Because just wait until we get Kawhi and PG, Norm, you know, everybody back. And even if we make some moves and upgrade, you know, this can be even better. So, these were just what I saw last season. So, our three-point shooting. Everyone knows this is... Our biggest strength is our team. We were the third best three-point shooters in the league as a team last year. And that's even without Kawhi and PG back. And that's just insane to think about. We only had Norm for, like, what, like less than 10 games? Like, So still to be third best three-point percentage in the league just shows our, you know, how deep we are on our, on our rotationary pieces and stuff like that. So, yeah. And even too last year, even with Kennard, this is what makes Kennard, um, you know, being able to be traded because even with Kennard in limited minutes last year, just as a specialty player, we were still the greatest three point shooting team in history. Look it up last year. We had the best three point percentage in history. Um, so, yeah, I mean, last year. And that's just uh, kind of what we're known for. That's something we hang our hat on. Ty Lu, and the. Uh, you know, us as an organization, we shoot the lights out. So, yeah, shout out to guys holding it down this year. Perimeter defense. Um, overall, our perimeter defense is pretty solid every year. It's kind of like the interior and transition defense that we usually struggle with. Just because, you know, our team being a little bit, um, like our starters being slightly older. I know we got a lot of youth and stuff off the bench and, even ones that haven't gotten any minutes yet, like solid minutes. But, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of youth, but a lot of our starters and stuff that get the heavy minutes are a little bit older, like guys like Morris. And, um, yeah, but overall, though, our perimeter defense, when, you know, when Kawhi, PG, Norm, all the boys are back, it's just going to be elite. Um, so our race, rotation players' development. It skyrocketed a lot of our guys' trade value. So this season, everyone knew it was kind of a gap year. Um, just kind of, you know, just kind of winging it until the next season, but keeping the morale up, you know, getting another winning season. So, yeah, I mean, um, guys like Kennard, his trade value skyrocketed since 11 months ago. Guys like Coffey, um, just a lot of guys. Marcus Morris. I mean, Marcus Morris, he would, a three-year deal is kind of trade is kind of um, risky to trade for to some teams because Morris is like, you know, 33 or 32. And uh, now that he's only got two years left and he still proved that he's able to, you know, at least somewhat carry a team to the playoffs or be one of the top two guys <laughs> if needed, like, that's a big. So, yeah, I mean, Morris and Kennard, guys like that, their trade value uh really went up 
Um, this season, though, we're cool in the clutch. You know, we had a ooh, we, we we're just we came through a lot when it mattered most. Um, even games like you know when when Reggie he wasn't shooting too great, like throughout the game in the fourth quarter he would just like light it up, and that's the thing, like. A lot of Clipper fans want to take Reggie out the closing lineups or whatever and act like he's trash. But this man, he's one of those guys that if you're a coach, you cannot take him out. Because even if he's struggling throughout the game, we've seen it so many times where he just goes crazy in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, he's just one of those dudes. Um, he came through a lot in the clutch this year. Same thing with Morris. A lot of our guys did, honestly. Kennard, everyone. Um, yeah. I mean, that's just something great that we did, winning culture. Of course, you guys know, 11 straight um, seasons of above 500 basketball. The next best team is at five streak. We're at 11, so obviously that um, stereotype of the Clippers, you know, being a not winning organization is not true. We just need to, uh, we just need some good luck our way, you know, not get injured in the playoffs, but... You know, we'll 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 bring that chip eventually. We'll bring that chip. But yeah, resilient characteristics, as we all know, this is one of our biggest strengths we hang our hat on. Um so many comebacks this year, so many memorable comebacks. I know a lot of people say the favorite was the thirty five point comeback against the Wizards when Kennard kinda went team Mac at the end and and just iced the game. Um, that one was nasty. Also, too, the comeback on the Nets, the Bledsoe game was pretty nice. Seeing Bledsoe do his thing for the team that he started out with. So that was another good one that I liked. Against the Jazz, too, that 25-point comeback, that was really nasty. We had so many. We had so many comebacks in the month of January. And, oh, my God. It was just great. Great to see, kind of reminded me of, kind of reminded us all of those 2018, 2019 days, you know, with Bev and Lou Will, Trez and all them. Um, But yeah, I mean, kind of reminded us that they still got that heart, so I like that. Great pick and roll offense, um, especially when Kawhi, PG come back, of course, Norman Powell can run the pick and roll as well, so that's just going to be even nastier, but just referring to this season, Reggie and Zoo, they really improved their two-man game. I feel like Zoo's hands got a lot better. A lot of people won't say that, but his hands did get a lot better just from catching. He's been catching a lot of bounce passes and stuff from Reggie. And, um, you know, before it was kind of like Kawhi would just give him those handoffs, those easy little dump-offs, and he'd just dunk it. But now he's catching bounce passes and stuff, and he's improved his passing out of the short roll. So, I mean, yeah, that's just great to see. Next man up mentality, of course. You know, Ty Lue instills in everybody. It showed it last year in the playoffs. It showed it um, many times this season, of course, with our stars out. So that's just a great thing. That's just um, something that's been in the organization for, for some years now. Thanks to the culture changers. Um, veteran leadership, of course. Morris, Reggie did their fucking things this year they're a great locker room presence um i'd be sad to see to see if they let morris go but i mean they gotta do what they gotta do but um yeah i mean they just great veteran leaders i feel like even Kawhi too Kawhi pg they had an impact even when they're injured you know uh, if enough they're when they're recovering this year um you know, Kawhi's always out there on the bench and stuff, cheering them on. But, uh, of course, non-toxic environment, too. Like, they don't have to deal with um, the other L.A. fans, the Laker fans, you know, just bashing them off of one bad performance. You know, it's like they kind of just get to hoop, you know what I mean? It's and uh, we, we, ju- we just enjoy watching them ball. We don't, like, tie all the other shit into it and act like school threats, so. You know, overall, it's a good environment for the for the guys. And, yeah, I mean, that's what attracted guys like Hawaii, PG, you know, guys like that. But great front office and coaches. Yes, sir. Bomber, everybody. Jay West, Ty Lue. 
Larry Drew, whatever his name is, assistant coach. I mean, I mean, yeah, everyone, everyone's doing their thing. What can I say? Now let's go to weaknesses. So rebounding on defensive glass. I mean, lack of boards from our power fours. This is really evident this year. We're getting out rebounded almost every single game, and um. I mean, like when we go small ball, here's the thing when we go small ball with Morris and Batum is that they don't, they can't really hit the glass that hard. I mean, like I know Morris, he did last game in the first half, but in the second half, he just got gassed out because he was playing almost the whole second half. Pretty much he did. And um, I mean, like, we just don't have that true, like, small ball five that can, like, that's mobile and can hit the glass very well, which I feel like we can address. Um, but yeah, it was just a common theme. Like we saw it though. We all see. We all see it. And uh, I mean, like you, you guys know. I mean, every, almost every single game, it just we just couldn't rally him up. And uh, also, to another weakness is a point of attack defense. So, I mean this, like, obviously with Kawhi and PG and everyone back and stuff, and, like, with Norm and all them, Rocco, I mean, our point of attack defense will be pretty solid, but I'm talking about this year, though, we really struggled with, like, quick point guards who are who are really good maestros in the pick and roll and stuff. Like, we would get torn up easily by, like, these really quick PGs we struggle with, honestly. Um... It would be nice if we could get, like, a point-of-attack defender who can guard these point guards, you know, get a nice PG, maybe Gary Payton. I don't know. But another weakness, collective team health. I mean, we just haven't been able to be healthy at the same time. Hopefully everyone's healthy going into training camp. Overall foot speed, we know this. I mean, we're just not the fastest team in the world. Um, I mean, guys like... Like, Coffey and Terrence Mann are really good at putting rim pressure and stuff in transition, but not too many other guys. I mean, Reggie can do it. Um, not too many guys, honestly. Um, we start hunting for threes anytime we're in a dry spell. We we guys know this. We've seen this in the playing games when we give up the leads. Um, we're in a dry spell. We just start hunting threes because you know that's kind of our stable when they don't fall it's just but really bad for possessions and we lo- rely on heavy isolation sometimes too much um yeah i mean it just is what it is um hopefully we can just fix these things and um overall though our ball movement was pretty solid this year reggie upgraded as a playmaker and uh he did his thing for real I mean, we kind of knew that Reggie could play make, though. We we knew this already. I mean, at least I did. At least I did. I knew Reggie could dime. But, yeah, I mean, he really stepped up this year. And um, interior defense, it could be shaky at times because a lot of times getting beat off the dribble and stuff, you know, sometimes it could be shaky. Uh, bad transition offense some like honestly our transition offense because not that many people can bring rim pressure like i said i mean you know when coffee gets the ball in transition he's like he can do these crazy layups and shit and just drive in terrence man to put a shoulder down do his signature layup and he does that gather step and puts the shoulder down um yeah i mean hopefully this gets better when pg and Kawhi come back um yeah, I mean, lack of point guard and center depth, we all know this. I mean, Xavier Moon, he didn't really even play that much point guard. Reggie Jackson pretty much did all the point guard role. Terrence Mann and Coffey did as well. Centers, we only had Zubak and Harnstein. I don't know, I feel like they could have just managed like like the balance of the roster a little bit better. You know what I mean? Like, which... This is why we can consolidate some of our rotationary pieces and fill out some areas that we need. And the next one, too much shooting guard slash small forward, a.k.a. wing def. Um, Yeah, that's what I mean. We can consolidate and 
you know, upgrade or, you know, upgrade the wing def, you know, get another wing that's even, like, you upgrade, you know, a couple of them just for one really great one, I don't know, like, just a really great small ball five, that would be nice, like, someone who can guard pretty much, like, four or five positions, but, yeah, I mean, we just got a lot of def, I mean, it's a good, it's a good problem to have, honestly, it's a good problem to have, and then to do, this is our to do in the off season. so, Resign Rocco. We do have his bird right, so I don't expect it to be too too hard to bring him back. Um, it should be relatively easy, especially since he wants to stay. And uh, we have his bird right, so that means we can go over the cap limit to to get to sign him. So he's pretty much a lock to come back. Batum, he'll most likely accept his player option. Uh, he likes being a Clipper. He's bought in and stuff. I don't I don't really see him leaving so. I expect him to accept the player option. If he doesn't, they work something out. Um, only make a smart consolidation trade involving Morris or Kennard if the deal is right. Don't force it since it's a win-win situation. So pretty much, I mean, you know, a lot of people are involving Morris or Kennard in these trade talks. But I say be patient. Take the deal if it's right. Um, we definitely need to upgrade our or, you know, power, like, we could use a, a power forward that fits a little bit better, probably has a little bit more speed, can guard, plays better defense, or maybe even, like, another a really good center. Um, only make a smart consolidation trade if the deal's right. I'm talking about this specifically for a player if they do it. Because um, they can always wait until trade deadline and do something, you know, finesse a team, fleece them for something. Like a desperate team, um, but yeah, it's a win-win situation. No, this by by this I mean like if they don't make a trade this off season with Morris or Kennard, if they don't shop them, um, I mean if they come back, I mean they're great role players. I mean that we've seen what Morris can do around Kawhi and PG. I mean he's not a bad fit. I mean there can be a better fit overall, but he's not a bad fit. And um, I know a lot of teams that would love him. Same thing with Kennard. I mean, uh, I wouldn't mind if they stay either. That's what I mean. It's a win-win situation. So so only do it if it's smart. And then the next one, if a cons consolidation move isn't available, then be patient till trade deadline to take advantage of a mid-tier team trying to take the next step. So I mean this, like, um, say if a team like the Kings are, like, middle of the pack next season, you know they traded Halliburton for Sabonis, so they're trying to win now make moves to win now so i mean like a team like that say if they're like hovering around eighth or something and we're like like the second seed you know um and like we're not really using canard or or like coffee or someone like that too much and you know you can uh make a smart consolidation move and um you know finesse a team whether it's for some picks or whatever you know, decent player. There's a ton of different options we can move, we can make in this scenario that we're in. So, you know, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's a good problem to have. Um, possibly consider finessing a team for a first round pick on draft day. Think Keon Johnson type move from last year. Um, so with Keon, he was pretty much like the main. Um, he was pretty much like the main um enticement for the the Blazers to to trade with us because they see a lot of upside in Keon and honestly he does have a lot of upside, so. Yeah, I mean, like making that move to draft Keon, you know, he was a lottery, lottery uh projected player and he dropped to us. So, um, you can always make a move and get someone really nice that we could use. You know, a power forward or. If a really good point guard's on the table, then you can make that move. But I'd rather wait, you know, till 2025, you know, because they have some really good prospects coming up. But, you know, we could make a Keon Johnson type move, you know, trade up. And, um, I mean, if the deal's right, if the deal's right, we shall see. We'll comment below what you guys think of that. The next one, if we don't trade up in the first round, then either take Yannick and Zoza, 
Trevian Williams or Julian Champagny if available with our second round pick. So these are the guys that you know I want I want us to take if if we keep if we don't trade up and then we just keep our second round pick. You know, if these guys are available, definitely take them. They're all pretty much can play the power forward center spots. Um Yannick and Zoza kinda has like this Giannis type build. And he's like really high upside, good rim protector. He's really fast. Good pick and roll man. Trevian Williams, good pick and roll man. Makes really good passes out of the post up. He's one of the best passers um in the whole draft class. He's really athletic. Um High upside guy. Julian Champagny is just like a pure scorer. He's kind of like a younger Morris that's faster with some better defense as of right now. Uh, I feel like he could strive with us. Really good scorer. Um, as far as free agency goes, we don't have to do too, too much. I mean, consider making an offer at Gary Payne II as a stopgap point, point guard for a couple of years while Preston develops. Um... This would be a pretty smart move. I mean, GP2 would fit in pretty well. And I don't think he would be wanting that too, too much. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's possible, they should look into doing it. Whether they free up some money or something. Like, like this is a guy we could use for sure, man. And this one I'm talking about can be the point of attack defender on the point guards. And, you know, kind of uh, somewhat play that Beverly role. Next one, would love to bring Harnstein back, but it's ultimately up to him and our front office to work out something. So uh, it kind of depends what his, what his market value is. But if they got the money, I say for sure bring him back. Um, if it's at the expense of someone else more important, then Harnstein's probably the guy I would probably give up first. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think of Harnstein going or staying. We see give our young guys more run during the regular season to shorten the load off the main guys. So if we do make a consolidation trade, then you definitely got to open up more minutes for guys like Brandon Boston Jr. And then definitely when we bring back uh, Jay Scrub, we got to get him some minutes. Um, Coffee, I definitely think he can get some minutes and take the load off guys like Kawhi and PG and stuff like that. So just work them in. Definitely give the young guys some minutes, give them some run. So, you know, overload doesn't happen because Reggie played a lot, a lot of minutes this year. He hasn't probably played that much minutes since since high school, yo. So, I mean, that was just, like, big ups to him and Morris. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely can get the youth some more minutes. And then uh, last one, make the last City Edition jerseys our permanent colorway, which is the San Diego Clipper jer- Clipper colors and the Buffalo Braves colors. Man, those that the that light blue and orange is so hard, man. And uh, maybe you can rebrand the logo as well, cause that current Clipper logo is just it's not that it's not it. Uh, let's be honest. Um, the current Clipper jerseys we got like the statement ones, the black, white, and blue ones. Those those ones are pretty solid, but. I feel like, uh, you know, the, or maybe this is why I put it at the end or save these moves for when we move into the Intuit Dome. You know, maybe rebrand and change all the jerseys, like hit them with it, like 2024 when we move into the Dome. And because uh, that would be so clean, y'all. Uh, that would be so clean. We definitely got to uh, rock with those colors, that light blue and those orange, because that's just like, ooh, we're the only team with those, and we got to take advantage because... That sky blue is so, so nice. Then don't, don't do. I got a short list for don't do. Because I pretty much covered a lot of it above. But do not trade Terrence Mann. A lot of people have been mentioning Team Mann in trades. He is one of our best point of attack defenders. Do not do that. That just wouldn't be smart. We need more guys with T- Terrence Mann's skill set, to be honest. That is like 6'5 and can guard you know, the better guys on the other team. Like, we kind of need more guys like him. Do not trade him away, please. Please do not do that. And he, we do want him to be a Clipper for life, so I do not want to trade Team. Do not trade Zubak. 
lot of people have been mentioning Zubak in trades. Do not do it because Zubak, a guy like him, is valuable because he's good. Because a guy that is good enough to start but doesn't have the ego to where you can bench him if you need to is so important. It is so important. That's what makes Zubak valuable to our lineup because he's not like... He can play his 25 minutes a game and then during the regular season and be a solid starter, contributor, getting almost a double-double. And in the playoffs, if it's a bad matchup, he doesn't have to play, you know. He can. He doesn't have to play that much. Like, uh, he doesn't have a big ego about it. Like, someone like Miles Turner, everyone mentions him, but he does. he's not a good rebounder. He's a worse rebounder than Zubak, and he plays more minutes. Um, and, uh... I mean, yeah. I mean, overall, he's he's a better shot blocker than Zubak, but he's not a better low post defender. Um, yeah, I mean, Zubak, he's just valuable to us. Do not trade him. Do not trade Reginald Jackson. This guy is like Mr. Clipper right now. If you trade, if you trade him, that'll kind of mess up the locker room. Do not do that. Um, do not trade BBJ. If you do this, me and Clip K seventy four will burn down. Balmer's office, all right? Balmer, we mess with you, so we don't want to do it, but do not trade BBJ, and do not let Jason scrub walk, because shit will go haywire fast, all right? And we don't want to go have to go drill instructor mode on you guys, so yeah, don't do that, buddy. And um, do not draft another shooting guard to small forward. Please do not do this. Well, I don't know why do why mock drafts have us doing this. Do not do this. So stupid. So stupid. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why do we need another small forward? Uh, do not draft another shooting guard small forward, please. If you take Max Christie, I'll be pissed. Um, then most importantly, do not go into next season with Reggie as the only point guard again. Please do not do this again. We need another smaller ball handler that can handle the rock um i mean reggie it was just like too much it was just too much overload for him and i mean he's he's a great enough player to do it which he did this whole season but please just just manage the roster spots a little bit better bro just balance it out i mean yeah i mean overall just health short summary health we got to be healthy going into next season Make smart, make a smart consolidation trade if need be. You know, if not, then be patient and finesse the team at the trade deadline. Do not trade any of these guys you see on the screen, all right? Do not let Jason Scrub walk, okay? Balance the roster a little bit on the def. And, yeah, I mean, overall, yeah, that's pretty much everything, honestly. I mean, obviously, re-sign Rocco and... Hopefully uh, get back the tomb, heart, and all those guys and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, everything's looking good. Comment down below what you guys think about all this. I mean, if you stuck it all the way through, comment down below. Let me know because you guys are some real ones. I know this is probably a really long video, but, yeah. Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts and what you would do differently and what you agree on or anything like that. Um, but yeah, have a great one, guys. CGODB signing out. Peace.